A question I get asked all the time is how do I do street photography without getting noticed? So in today's episode, I'm gonna go through four ways you can blend in a bit more, be a bit more discreet for the next time you go out to shoot. So these tips should hopefully make street photography a bit more fun and a little less nerve wracking for you, which in turn should improve your photography as well. So quickly before getting into those tips, this episode is sponsored by me. All the photos you see have been edited using my cinematic preset pack, and I'll leave the link for that down below in the descriptions. Secondly, you guys can do me a huge favor by hitting that subscribe button and the like button as well. So let's get straight into this list. And first up is to hold the camera up as if you're filming something and not taking a photo. So when I started photography a couple years back, I'd find the whole idea of street photography to be pretty daunting. And it was a couple years before I went from shooting landscapes and cityscapes and architecture to actually doing street photography. And one of the methods which I found helped me early on was to hold the camera up and pretend that I'm filming rather than taking photos. So the reason this works is people are far less likely to confront you or notice you if they think you're taking a video and just walking around the streets. Whereas if they feel like you're taking a photo of them, it's a lot more personal because you've decided to single them out. And therefore there's a far higher likelihood that they're gonna notice you. So to use this method, all you have to do is hold your camera up like this, use the LCD at the back and walk around as if you're filming. And then when you see something interesting, just use your shutter button, take the photo. In my experience using this method, I hardly got noticed. I never got confronted. So if you are a bit wary about doing street photography, this is a good place to start. Okay, so next up is to hold the camera close to your face when you're walking around doing street photography. Now, this is a technique used by many of the great street photographers. While they're walking around, you'll usually see that they hold the camera pretty high up and close to their face. Now, the main reason for this is it makes you far more reactive to what's going on, and it's far easier to go from here to here than it is to pick the camera up from your waist or if it's across your body with a neck strap on. Secondly, if you're moving just slightly in order to take the photo, and you're not picking the camera all the way up from your waist, your subject is far less likely to see you because you're moving less. So in all, with this tip, hold that camera close to your face. It means that your subject is less likely to see you because there's less movement. And finally, it will make you a better photographer because you're gonna be far more responsive to what's going on around you and you'll be able to take your photos faster as well. All right, so next up, and this one's a really important one in my experience, it's to dress in neutral colors when you go out to do street photography. When you do street photography, it's far easier when people don't notice you're there or you blend into the background. So if you start wearing bright colors and powerful colors like reds and yellows and greens and blues, you're gonna be far, far more noticeable than if you go out wearing blacks and grays and whites. And it's why when I go out to do street photography, I tend to wear mostly blacks and grays and that even goes for my cameras. So I avoid getting things like red shutter buttons or have red logos or any kind of bright color on the camera or on the strap. Because again, that's gonna make me more noticeable and make my job as a street photographer harder. So be sure to avoid those kind of bright colors, avoid the reds, avoid the yellows, and dress in some more blander, some more neutral tones instead the next time you go out to do street photography. So next up is to shoot from the hip. And this is a method I still love using. And it's also a method which past great photographers like Fred Herzog used quite a lot as well. For this technique, all you have to do is hold your camera at chest or at waist height and then take your photos from that level rather than holding the camera up to your eye. People are far, far less likely to notice you if you've got your camera down by your waist than they are if you've got your camera up by your face on your eye. And secondly, it gives you a bit more of a unique perspective when you're taking your photos. So it's the reason why, as I said earlier, photographers like Fred Herzog like shooting from the hip. It gives a very different look to taking photos from eye level and sometimes it can give a more childlike view of the world because you're shooting from far lower down. Also, this technique does work best if your camera has a flip out screen because you can just hold the camera down by your waist and then look down at the LCD and know exactly what's going on. But that said, I do use this technique with my X-Pro2, which doesn't have a flip out screen. It just takes a while to kind of get used to the angle to shoot at and know what kind of distance to shoot from. So yeah, to wrap up this tip, shoot from the hip, it just makes you far less noticeable and it makes it a bit more easy to take photos of people without them noticing what you're doing. 
And finally, just a couple bonus tips when it comes to blending in when you do street photography. First up, go to crowded areas. So it's far easier to blend in if you're in a crowded place. So city centers, busy high streets, stuff like that. People are far less likely to notice you. And secondly, they're probably in a rush to get somewhere anyway. Next up, use longer focal lengths. So 50 millimeters, maybe even 85 millimeters. And it just allows you to take photos of people without getting too close to them. Also use the fishing method. I've talked about this in my street photography tips episode. I'll drop the link to that up above here. And finally, just be confident when you go out to shoot. This is gonna sound weird, but the more confident you are, the less likely it is that people notice you. People are far more likely to notice you if you're nervous and you're kind of anxious about picking up the camera or not. Whereas if you're confident and you just pick up the camera up, take the shot and move on, they're far less likely to one, notice you or two, confront you or even think anything of it. So just try to be a bit more confident when you go about your photography. This is obviously quite a difficult one. And in my experience, it just took me years of doing street photography to get to the point where you can just pick the camera up and take the shot and move on without having to think about it too much. So it's probably worth noting that when you do do street photography, it's really important to respect the people you're taking photos of. With street photography, there's always a fine balance between, you know, making people feel uncomfortable and uh, trying to capture them in their most natural form. And that's the thing I love about street photography is capturing people going about their daily business in the most natural way. And if they see you taking a photo, then obviously they are gonna act a lot less natural and change how they act. But as I just said, there's a thin line between that and making your subject feel uncomfortable or capturing people in vulnerable positions. This is why I don't really like the style of photography when photographers get up in people's faces, make them feel uncomfortable, scare them. And I've even seen some photographers just walk up to people with a gigantic flash and pop it off in their face. And the same goes for photographers who take photos of homeless people and people in need. In my opinion, this is kind of taking advantage of people and making them feel uncomfortable at the same time. So as a street photographer, you do have a responsibility to make sure the people you are taking photos of are not being made to feel uncomfortable and you're doing it in a responsible manner. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Also, if you have any tips of your own, please share them in the comments down below. And if you have any other questions regarding street photography, again, drop them down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. A huge thanks for watching this episode. Stay safe and I'll catch you in the next one.